Did you know there are actually a whole bunch of different ways to rank at the top of Google? Here at Exposure Ninja, we've helped our clients' sites rank using all of them, sometimes at the same time. So today, I'm going to be showing you how to rank at the top of Google again and again and again and again and again. And by the way, I'm even going to show you how to rank at the top of a feature on Google that isn't even technically released yet. But we just want to make sure that your SEO strategy is future proof. So if you already know loads about SEO and you already have an SEO strategy in place, stick around because I'm sure we're going to be covering at least something that you're not already doing. Our first tactic is something that we call page boosts. Most marketers think of their website as one thing. We want to rank our whole website higher on Google. And yes, there are what we call site-wide signals, which do help your whole website rank better. But it's actually quite rare that you'd be trying to increase the ranking of your homepage. Sometimes it happens, for example, this client of ours sells takeaway packaging, and we've got their homepage ranking number one for takeaway packaging. But the vast majority of the time, it's actually your website's subpages that have the best chance of ranking. And this is good because Google doesn't see your website as one thing. Google sees your website as a collection of individual pages which each have the opportunity to rank for a whole variety of different phrases. Let me show you an example to demonstrate. We have a client of Exposure Ninja that sells something called a common assessment standard and when you search for this you'll notice there is an ad at the top of this page which we're running for the client. They're also ranking in position two but they're also ranking in position four with another page. Okay so how do you get multiple pages ranking for the same term? Well, sometimes this is a case of creating a new page to target a variation of the term or a related question that someone might have about this topic. Sometimes, like in this case, this is about creating a new page to serve a different intent. Now, common assessment standard could be searched for by someone who's looking for common assessment standard accreditation, but it could also be searched for by someone who's just looking for information about this topic. And Google really doesn't know which way to go with this search term. So what we did in this case was create different pages targeting each of these intents. That way Google could show both of them to potential searchers and let them choose. So how do you start working out which pages you want to identify in order to give them a page boost? And then how do you actually give them that boost in rankings? Well, the first thing to do is use a tool like SEMrush, which you can get a free trial of at thankyouninjas.com to find pages that are ranking reasonably well, but not quite as high as they could be doing. So for example, you might be looking at pages that are ranking positions 20 to 40. You then want to have a look at the content on those pages against the other pages that are ranking for this search term. You might notice that the other pages that are ranking have really long, really detailed content, whereas your page is maybe a little bit thin, maybe a little bit generic, in which case you're going to want to beef up yours, you're going to want to add more information. You might also do things like add more personal experience to that page. So can you add any stories or case studies which make your page really useful? You can also use your favorite SEO tool to have a look at the number and quality of links pointing to each different page that's ranking in the search results. Again, if you notice that your pages have fewer links to them than the pages that are ranking at the top of Google, you know what to do, get some links. And by the way, we're going to cover that later on. Our goal when we're working on a client's site and we've identified the pages that we want to give a ranking boost to is to make those pages the most suitable pages for Google to rank for that topic. We want to answer every possible question the searcher would have so they don't have to visit any other pages. We want to give them examples. And of course, we want to give them a clear next step to take if they want to move forward with whatever solution we're selling. The second way to rank at the top of Google is using Google's SGE, Search Generative Experience. This is Google's brand new AI search engine, which at the time of filming this video isn't even publicly available yet. But we've had some fantastic successes ranking in this new AI search engine. This is what it looks like. So when you search for something, you see this big generative AI box at the top here, and it's got some website links and you can click down here to see other website links too. If you're not already, you need to be preparing for this. Look at how much space on the search results page this generative AI section covers. It pushes the regular organic results way, way down the page. So you need to be making sure that your web pages are ranking here and preferably in these top three carousel slots at the top right hand corner of SGE. Now we found it's much easier to get the pages on your website ranking in SGE if they're already ranking in the organic results. Though just because they are ranking well in the organic results doesn't necessarily mean they're going to rank in SGE. SGE plays by its own rules. Now we've covered SGE in loads of detail in other videos, so I'm not going to go into much more detail here, but check out those videos if you want to learn about the specific ranking factors and see some case studies for SGE ranking. Way to get ranking at the top of Google number three is local SEO. 
Now, loads of brands focus on nationwide and locationless SEO, but there are also plenty of searches where localized search results are shown on Google. And these are a key battleground. Not only do these results show on desktop and mobile when you're searching locally for something that Google thinks might have a local component to it, but these local rankings also feed into localized SGE results as well. So making sure that you're ranking prominently in Google local results if they're showing for your target searches is absolutely key. Let's take a look at a search like this one, Personal Injury Lawyer San Antonio. You can see at the top of the page, we've got a couple of ads here. Now the cost per click for a phrase like this can be super high, anything from 10 to $40 a click. But because Google has realized that this is a search with local intent, the regular organic results are pushed way, way down the page. And instead Google shows these local listings at the top of the organic results. Now we've got our client top spot here for this search, which is incredibly valuable because they are essentially the first ranking organic result on the page. As Google evolves and builds in more local information to its SGE results, it's gonna be drawing more and more information from your Google business page. So it's absolutely vital that you're keeping this page up to date. You're adding new photos. You have an automation process in place to collect reviews from your customers. You're including plenty of location information on your main website. You're listed in all the relevant local directories and you're getting links and features from other locally focused websites. All of this helps Google build an understanding of your relevance in local searches and increases the likelihood that you'll get this sort of ranking. And by the way, if you have multiple locations, you can get multiple locations listed in the Google local results. For example, see how we've helped our client here get two rankings for Rehab Clinic London, which is an incredibly competitive and valuable phrase. Tactic four for getting multiple rankings on Google is using video. You'll notice how some searches on Google trigger video results. For example, here I've searched for SG ranking and you can see Google is ranking videos in the search results. For some other searches like lip gloss tutorial, look at this, Google has decided that video is by far the most relevant type of content to rank. All of the top results are YouTube videos with a snippet of this one actually playing inside the search results. And this is unlikely to change as Google presses on with SG. For example, how to make an RFP. Look at this, we've got a video in the SG results as well. In addition, Google has been working on rolling out a new perspectives filter, which shows predominantly user generated videos in the search results. So it's very clear that Google sees video as part of the future of search. So if videos are showing in some of the search results that you're targeting, you need to have some sort of video strategy. So some quick tips here. Firstly, we found it's much better to post your videos on YouTube. Perhaps unsurprisingly, YouTube tends to rank really well. It's a property that's owned by Google and it gets the majority of the traffic. Now I know what you're thinking, yeah, yeah, but we're not great on video. We don't really know where to start. What type of thing should we even post? Well, we found that edutainment works pretty well. That's a weird kind of mixture of education and entertainment. Yes, you need to be educational in whatever you're posting, but you also need to be entertaining. Nobody likes sitting through a boring corporate video posted by someone who looks like they're being held at gunpoint. Even if you are, please don't hurt me. My biggest tip here is to find someone who's really passionate in the organization who can be your face of the videos. But another strategy that we've seen companies like Adobe and Figma take is collaborating with influencers in their space. Now they're not always working with these influencers because they have a big audience. Instead, they're paying these influencers to present videos on the topics that they want to target because they know that these influencers are good in front of a camera, they have the editing setups, and they can produce content much better and much more likely to resonate with people than someone inside the company can. By the way, if you want us to do this type of stuff for your business and your website, you can request some free help in the form of our free website and marketing review. During this review, we'll take a look at where your site is ranking at the moment on Google. We'll also make some recommendations about the areas that we would suggest prioritizing to improve that ranking. In addition to SEO, we'll also have a look at what you're doing with your paid search. We'll have a look at your website and see if there are any opportunities to improve the number of conversions that you're getting from it. And we'll give you some recommendations about your email marketing too. All of this is completely free of charge and you can request it at ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. We'll record all of this into a video which we'll send to you usually within two to three working days. So go and request your free website and marketing review from ExposureNinja.com forward slash review. 
But once you've got the person who's gonna be in the video, here's the approach I would take. Firstly, browse through your existing content to see if any of it would make a good video topic. So you might be looking at your old blog posts, your articles, your knowledge base, any help guides, tutorials, case studies, and you're looking for the sort of thing which might be really interesting to people. Hopefully this content should already have good keyword research behind it, i.e. you know that this content matches something that people are already searching for. You can then have a look on YouTube, just search for that phrase, see what other content is out there covering that topic. Pay attention to things like the quality of the video, how good the presenter is, whether the title is optimized for search, does it actually make you want to click on it, and how good is the thumbnail. If you notice that some or all of these are total trash, then great, you might be one of the many industries where nobody has really built a solid video strategy yet. Now I have to be honest, video is not a quick fix. You need to put a lot of time and energy into it in order to start getting traction. You're gonna want to review the data once you start posting your videos. Look at your retention rate. Are people watching the whole thing or are they tuning out early? If they're tuning out early, is there anything in the videos that's making them tune out early? If you or whoever's presenting the videos is new to doing that, they're also likely to suck at first. So you're gonna have to do a few reps before they get really engaging. And that's kind of my final point on videos. If your organization is new to doing videos, they are just gonna suck at first. There's no other way around that. And you might feel like you need to wait until you're a bit more confident, but you can't really improve if you don't start. So you may as well just start now. Tactic five to getting multiple rankings at the top of Google is to use other people's websites. Backlinks or inbound links, i.e. other websites that are linking to your website, have always been an important part of SEO because they show Google that you're an authority, that your product or your service or your page is respected by others. This is a big part of what we do at Exposure Ninja. For example, getting our clients featured in industry publications or national publications like this one, and this can be a really powerful way to help your website increase its ranking across all the phrases that it's targeting. But there's another benefit to this type of strategy as well. You'll notice for some searches like this one here, best HR software, that many of the top ranking websites on Google are actually third party sites that are listing particular providers. For example, this article on Forbes is the one that's ranking top. Now you can bet that there is some sort of deal behind the scenes here with the products that are being featured and Forbes, but this can be a really powerful way Way of generating additional traffic even if Google isn't showing individual software providers at the top of that search. Now that's not to say that you need to rely on third-party websites. Here we can see Employment Hero ranking for this search even though they are an HR software themselves. They've just put together a similar sort of list, they've got it ranked and guess who they're ranking at number one? Hey, it's themselves. Now we've used both of these types of strategy with clients. I can remember one instance where we had a client that was ranking well for a best something phrase. We had another client that was selling the best something. So we actually put them together and we got this client to recommend this client's product. Now the secret hidden in plain sight here is that getting featured on other people's websites takes a huge amount of tenacity and patience. You're probably gonna get rejected far more times than you get accepted. It's also worth saying that just just because a particular page or article that you're featured in doesn't have its own ranking, that doesn't mean that it's not valuable. It can still help your website's ranking by the fact that it's a backlink. Getting our clients featured in articles like this really helps their ranking, even if this article itself isn't ranking. Makes sense? As you can see, ranking well on Google isn't going anywhere and it's gonna continue being one of the main digital marketing goals for businesses, even as Google brings out new features in its search results like generative AI. But the key to getting ranked using all of these different tactics shares a really common approach. And that is great keyword research to identify the phrases that you need to be targeting, having a look at the search results pages to see what types of content are ranking, putting together amazing content on your pages and optimizing it for each of those different features and then getting mentioned, featured and linked from around the internet. And we've helped clients generate huge return on investment through their SEO across all of these different features and tactics. Some of them didn't exist five years ago, some of them won't exist in five years. But the businesses that get to grips with Google and how it evolves, those are going to be the ones that win. Now you may not know this, but Google actually produces its own guide to SEO. It's a bit of a monster, it's 176 pages of A4. But this details exactly the sort of web pages that Google wants to rank well. Now I've combed through it and pulled out all the most important information. Luckily for you, you don't have to read it. I've taken out all the most important bits and put them in this video. So you can see exactly what Google wants to rank today and in the future. Then you just reverse engineer it. So go and check out that video next. Until next time, see you soon.